Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess, to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask blessed Mary and her virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. <laughs> and praiseworthy service. Grant, we pray, that we may hasten without stumbling to receive the things you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. reading from the Book of Wisdom. Before the Lord, the whole universe is as a grain from a balance, or a drop of morning dew come down upon the earth. But you have mercy on all, because you can do all things, and you overlook people's sins that they may repent. For you love all things that are, and loathe nothing that you have made. For what you hated, you would not have fashioned. And how could a thing remain unless you willed it, or be preserved, had it not been called forth by you. But you spare all things because they are yours. O Lord and lover of souls, for your imperishable spirit is in all things. Therefore you rebuke offenders little by little, warn them and remind them of the sins they are committing, that they may abandon their wickedness and believe in you, O Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks to God. God.
reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, we always pray for you that our God may make you worthy of his calling and powerfully bring you to fulfillment every good purpose and every effort of faith, that the name of our Lord Jesus may be glorified in you and you in him in accord with the grace of our God and Lord Jesus Christ. We ask you, brothers and sisters, with regard to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our assembling with him, not to be shaken out of your mind suddenly or to be alarmed, either by a spirit or by an oral statement or by a letter allegedly from us to the effect that the day of the Lord is at hand. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Jesus came to Jericho and intended to pass through the town. Now a man there named Zacchaeus, who was a chief tax collector and also a wealthy man, was seeking to see who Jesus was. But he could not see him because of the crowd, for he was short in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree in order to see Jesus, who was about to pass that way. When he reached the place, Jesus looked up and said, Zacchaeus, come down quickly, for today I must stay at your house. And he came down quickly and received him with joy. When they all saw this, they began to grumble, saying, He has gone to stay at the house of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Behold, half of my possessions, Lord, I shall give to the poor. And if I have extorted anything from anyone, I shall repay it four times over. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man too is a descendant of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save what was lost. The Gospel of the Lord. Card, the pew for Holy Communion. Second collection next weekend is our um, fall seminarian education uh, collection. Um, we have 49 of those black holes of <laughs> financial black holes, and they, um, they're expensive little guys. So, at any rate, um, but uh, so that would be that. Uh, food and fellowship after Mass today is going to be a breakfast book. Uh, buffet by the Immense Club. Generally, they do a fantastic job, so come on down for a calorie-free <laughs> breakfast buffet. Um, we have All Saints and All Souls coming up this uh, this week, All Saints being Tuesday, which is a holy day of obligation. We'll have Mass here at 10 a.m. in English, um, and then 12 noon down at uh, St. Jude. And then All Souls Day, there will be a 9 a.m. Mass in English at St. Jude, 11 a.m. Mass here in English, and 12 noon here in Latin. It's traditional that uh, priests offer three masses on All Souls Day, um, regardless of the pastoral need. Uh, also, we have the um, All Souls Novena will be taking place in, in the beginning, I believe on Wednesday. It's nine masses being offered uh, for those of your faithful departed that um, if you uh, get an envelope by one of the, the doors, on the back of which their names, you can inscribe names of the faithful departed 
Um, if you wish, you may put a mass stipend in there. We'll be offering those nine masses uh, for those souls. Um, so be sure to, uh, to do that and to put it in the operatory basket um, today or drop it off at the, at the office. Also, our Book of Remembrance uh, will be returning. Uh, so for the month of November, which is the month dedicated to the four souls in purgatory. And so we'll have that displayed um, by Wednesday. You can inscribe the names of your uh, loved ones uh, upon, especially those who uh, passed away this past year. Uh, to be mindful that um, the daily mass schedule will be adjusting starting November uh, 7th. So just uh, I'll refer you to the, um, to the uh, bulletin website. And um, we're continuing to receive um, pledges for the uh, capital campaign. And you know, today we were going to say our capital campaign prayer together um, one last time, at least for this stretch. But instead, I'm going to ask you to, um, to join me in prayer and to keep in your prayers the repose of the soul of uh, one of our parishioners, uh, Lori Walsh, uh, who recently passed away. We wait to hear about uh, arrangements, and of course we'll relay that um, to you. So, uh, in your charity, you'll, you'll join me in prayer right now. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord, amen. and may amen. perpetual life shine upon her. May she rest in peace, amen. amen. May her soul and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace, amen. amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. God reward you. All right. Um, Friday was the feast of uh, St. Jude, and so what you can do is um, celebrate your patronal feast on the closest weekend. So that's what we did at St. Jude this past weekend. So St. Jude is on my mind. I'll just you know, speak briefly about him. I don't know how much you guys uh, know about him. And then, interestingly, his exchange with our Lord at the Last Supper and how that's connected with the Gospel that's connected with the 31st Sunday of Ordinary Time, which you just heard. So, as you know, St. Jude is one of the Twelve Apostles, okay? Um, his name is the same as Judas, as in Judas Iscariot, but a certain somebody ruined that name. And so, in English, uh, we have the good Judas, uh, that name spelled um, Jude, as opposed to Judas. But both are hearkening back to the tribe of Judah, okay? He's the brother of... Um, St. James the Less. He's one of the four cousins of our Lord, in addition to um, James and Simon, and meaning uh, he's called one of the brethren of the Lord, but remember in Semitic languages, there are no two distinct words for, for, for blood brother and cousin. It's like uh, Ken, the word, you know, Ken or something. Um, Jude wrote one of the 27 books of the New Testament. Maybe that should be your, your homework this, uh, this week. It's... Uh, all of one page, so I think we can manage that. Uh, and so, what stirred St. Jude to write a letter, which ultimately was discerned by the Church as being divinely inspired, and thus included in the canon of Scripture? The main point in his letter is that, is what we've been considering the last few weeks, namely that people have been corrupting the message of the Gospel. And we don't really get too much details uh, from the letter, but it's something that he's battling against. And he's warning the followers of Christ, all right, there's a funny new idea that's swirling around. Um, do not fall for it. And that seems to be a constant refrain, even at the time of the apostles. Um, I guess just our fallen human nature, we want to distort the message of our Lord. Maybe to make following him easier, maybe to make it more socially or politically acceptable or whatever the case may be. I just think it's the dumbest thing in the world. If Christ is God in the flesh and he had a message to give, who are any of us to, to, to mess with that message? It doesn't make any sense. So I didn't know for that. I'm getting myself all worked up. Right. Um, tradition tells us that St. Uh, Jude went to Syria, to Edessa, because the king there um, had asked our Lord, during our Lord's public ministry, to come to him and to heal him. Because even in Matthew's Gospel, it said that the Lord's fame had spread even throughout, throughout Syria. And so the king of Edessa there had leprosy, 
He's at his wit's end on how to get cured of it, heard of this miracle worker, our Lord, and asked for him to come. Our Lord says that he will send an apostle, but he doesn't do it right away. So yet another example of sometimes God has his own timing, and it's not like right now. And so I don't know how much time had elapsed, but clearly the Lord had to conclude his public ministry. But then uh, he died, rose from the dead. And it was only after the resurrection that Jude ends up being the one going to Edessa. And he goes there with the Shroud of Turin, the burial cloth of our Lord, upon which is seared, really, uh, a miraculous image of the Lord that even today scientists cannot explain, even though it's one of the most studied artifacts of all of history. And so what they uh, would do uh, throughout the centuries, because you see it in iconography regards to the Shroud of Turin, um, but I assume it started even in the first century, is that because there was this miraculous image of a body, but the front side as well as the back side, they would fold it in such a way that the face would be what was exposed. And so St. Jude would have gone to Edessa, uh, revealed to the king this face of Christ. Um, the king was, in fact, healed. But this is the reason why in iconography, St. Jude is presented with a face. Um, usually it kind of looks like a coin, but over his chest, hearkening back to this tradition. So St. Jude uh, evangelizes around the Mediterranean world and gets himself martyred, either beaten to death by, uh, with, a, uh, with a club or with an axe. Somebody had axed him to death. And by 700, his relics are brought to St. Peter's in Rome. So he's a patron saint of lost causes, maybe because when a king has all the resources and money in the world and still can't fix his problem, he himself becomes a lost cause and only Christ can help. But St. Jude um, has a beautiful question to our Lord, which has this uh, incredible exchange, really, at the Last Supper. So you can imagine just how momentous those precious hours were, the Lord knowing he was about to be arrested and sacrificed. The apostles certainly had been warned that this would happen. They must, they must have known that it was coming to an end. And so the Lord's in the middle of his discourse to the apostles at the Last Supper. And he says, I will not leave you desolate. I will come to you. Yet a little while in the world will see me no more. But you will see me. So that's probably the resurrection, of course. Because I live, you will live also. In that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. He who has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father. And I will love him and manifest myself to him. So you see what the gateway into that incredible relationship is of letting God dwell within us and we dwell within God and God manifesting himself to us and we come into savor um, who he is. It's those who have his commandments and keep them. All of the commandments. You and, you and I, we are mere creatures, fallen at that. We have no business exempting ourselves from even the smallest of the commandments. But if we hold them um, it opens up this relationship. And this is why I think they were given to us, to protect that relationship. <clears throat> Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, so St. Jude said to him, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us, and not to the world? Jesus answered him, If a man loves me, he will keep my word. And my Father will love him, we will come to him and make our home with him. I mean, is that not what the human heart longs for most? I mean, we can fool ourselves in thinking worldly career, or wealth, or fame, or pleasure, or just the easy life, or whatever. Um, 
it's going to fulfill us. Um, but it won't. None of that will. We have this infinitely sized hole within our hearts that's created for God and will be restless. It will be not at peace until it has God. So there you have another reason why we need to keep his word and to keep his commandments and not tinker with them. Okay? Now, there is a connection with the gospel that we just heard. This idea of Christ and the Father making their home within us. Because we have Zacchaeus receiving Christ into his home. So let's consider that. At that time, Jesus came to Jericho and intended to pass through the town. Christ is everywhere. God is everywhere. But there, you know, he's always ready to hear our petitions. But at the same time, it does seem like he's passing by. But maybe that's because our earthly life is passing by. And so there is really a limited time to receive him. Now a man there named Zacchaeus, who was a chief tax collector and also a wealthy man. I mean, these are all sorts of red flags right here. Not because we don't like taxes, I get that. But at that time, um, if a Jew was working as a tax collector, that means he was in cahoots with the evil Romans. Okay, They had a quota, and he had to fulfill that quota. And, um, and, and pinch it out of those, uh, his fellow Jews. And anything that he made over that quota, he was able to retain to, for himself. Well, it says he's a wealthy man. That, mean, that means he was overtaxing his brother Jews, okay? And not, he was a, not just a tax collector, but a chief tax collector. So talk about a lost cause. He better be praying to St. Jude. <laughs> but he was seeking to see who Jesus was. He bothered to care. Where so much of the world is so distracted from what or one thing or another, the Lord just passes them by. And so it makes us see, are we truly seeking Christ who dwells in our tabernacle? But he, Zacchaeus, could not see him because of the crowd, for he was short in stature. Stature. All right, so he's a problem. He's, he's short, there's a crowd, there's an obstacle. And maybe that's not our specific problem, but I bet you we all have crowds for us to contend with. And it may just be crowds in our mind. Our minds are crowded with distractions, with anxieties, with wounds, or whatever. Such a they get in the way, seemingly, between us and the Lord. But Zacchaeus, you see, this is already the first movement of grace, him just wanting to see the Lord, um, which is a good sign. But what's more is that he doesn't let an obstacle uh, overcome him, but rather he runs ahead, climbs a sycamore tree, in order to see the Lord. So running and climbing up trees, I mean, unless you're you know, little boy, that's probably going to be a taxing thing. Sometimes seeking the Lord is difficult. Sometimes prayer, a lot of times prayer, is difficult. But is it, is it not still worth it? For through prayer, persistence in prayer, we may in fact come to see the Lord. Who may manifest himself to us in the silence of our hearts. We give him that time. So he wanted to do all this in order to see the Lord, who was about to pass that way. And it's just a beautiful image, this whole thing. He's about to pass by. Are we disposed when he passes by? All right. And then when he, the Lord, uh, reached the place, he looked up and said, Zacchaeus, come down quickly, for today I must stay in your house. So the Lord is no longer merely passing by, but because Zacchaeus has received those prevenient graces, the first movement of grace, and because he's beginning to respond to those graces, the Lord is no longer going to pass him by, but rather he's going to stay. Because he bothered to 
to pray even through the obstacles. And he came down quickly and received him with joy. When we come down the aisle in order to receive Holy Communion, how conscious are we are about him whom we are about to receive? <clears throat> or are we just going through the motions? I encourage you, if you're receiving Holy Communion in a state of grace, you know, really to, this is why we have to be reflective. It's why we have to have some silence in our, in our hearts and our minds because to be recollected, to collect ourselves so that we can be more fully present, we can come down off the tree and to receive our Lord with greater joy as opposed to just like mindless cattle coming to the feeding trough. Then when they all saw this and began to grumble, he's gone to stay at the house of the sinner. Is that not what he will do with us? Even if we're in a state of grace, all of us remain sinners. We're not worthy that he should come under our roof, as we will say right before communion. And nonetheless, this is why he's come. And not to confirm us in our sin. That's not what he's come to do. Why? Because you see, this next part is crucial. But Zacchaeus stood there. So the people are complaining. <coughs> Zacchaeus stood there. And he said to the Lord, Behold, half my possessions I shall give to the poor. And if I have extorted anything from anyone, I shall repay it four times over. In other words, Zacchaeus is changing his life. He has encountered, the, 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 he has encountered our Lord. And he will be the one to change. Mm -hmm. People today, we all have sin. That's nothing new. But the poison of today is this idea that all are welcome, meaning we don't have to change. We're confirmed in our sins. We shouldn't be judging anybody anyways. You know what? The church needs to change, not me. That is a diabolical lie that ultimately keeps us from the Lord. If we don't conform our wills to His, that's like a husband and wife not conforming their hearts to each other's. And that makes for a not a peaceful home. We're all sinners. We need to conform to Him. Zacchaeus is willing to do it, even though he seemed like a lost cause. He's willing to try. That's what we can do. We can try. Okay? So, I think that's enough. I can smell that breakfast. It's <laughs> driving me crazy. Should have done the incense. All right? So, but I'm thinking about the bread of heaven, okay? Thank you, Men's Club, for this opportunity. To, all right. Be praying your rosary every day. Our Lady can help, okay, with all of this. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light. True God from true God, be God and not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. Pressed in and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified by the Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven. And seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, happy, and half solid church. I possess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins.
us all our prayers and petitions to God our Heavenly Father. For the church, that Christ find us eager and ready for him on the day of his coming. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those seeking salvation in wealth and material things, that they find it rather in Jesus Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That sinners may be drawn back to the sacrament of penance. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That each and every one of our parishioners may be involved in the building a beacon of Catholic Faith Capital Campaign and the strengthening of our faith community. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O God, a refuge and our strength through the prayers of your church, for you yourself are the source of all devotion. And grant, we pray, that what we ask in faith we may truly obtain through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join us in singing an offertory in number 454 in the music issue. I heard the voice of Jesus say, number 454. Brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, become for you a pure oblation and for us a holy outpouring of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gather them again to yourself, that the people formed as one by the unity of the Holy Trinity, made by the, made the body of Christ in the temple of the Holy Spirit, by to the praise of your manifold wisdom be manifest as a church. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you. As with joy we Apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John, and Paul, Cosmas, and Damian, and all your saints. 
We ask that through their merits and prayers and all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, in order our days in your peace. We command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up. similar way when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. Through Christ our Lord, amen. So it's also your servants who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant and share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, for John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, to sanctify them, to fill them with life, bless them, and set them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. With the kingdom, the power, and the glory of the Lord, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit.
takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. And only say the word, my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May the working of your power, O Lord, increase in us, we pray, so that renewed by these heavenly sacraments, we may be prepared by your gift to receive, for receiving what they promise through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us the God. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God give you the humble pray. And thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits, crowd out the world, seeking the root of souls. Amen. The sacred heart of Jesus. Have mercy on us. The sacred heart of Jesus. Have mercy on us. The sacred heart of Jesus. Have mercy on us. Please join us in singing our closing hymn, number 422.